I put Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 on pause for a bit just to take a look at Avowed because on top of being an RPG fan and an Obsidian fan from back in the day, I was also interested in the game from a technical perspective and it's pretty interesting guys. This is one of the few Unreal Engine 5 games that uses Nanite and both software and hardware ray tracing or Lumen. It's used for reflections and global illumination and the difference can be quite transformative actually. Now, most Unreal Engine 5 games just use software Lumen, which can do a pretty good job, but hardware Lumen is much better. This game is a good example of that, and I hope we see more of this. We'll look at the overall performance on PC, which, spoiler alert, for a UE5 game that uses the latest features, it's actually pretty good. We'll also take a look at native resolution, upscaling, and frame generation as well. As far as the game itself though, this isn't a review of the content, I've only played it for a few hours, but I've been having quite a bit of fun with it. It feels very good to play with a mouse and keyboard, it's responsive, the combat is actually quite good. It's not an easy game, you can get killed quite easily if you don't pay attention. You can dodge, block, and there are multiple types of weapons and playstyles to choose from. The world itself is quite dense and interactive, there's destructible environments, quite a bit of platforming as well, which is I very much enjoy. Uh, there is verticality to the combat as well. It can feel like Doom sometimes going after enemies or trying to take them down with ranged attacks. Are you blind? We're being hunted. Get rid of the band. We'll talk after. Oh, no, you don't. Hey! Now, unfortunately, I feel this game is going to get a lot of resistance from a chunk of the player base that have already written off the game because of the clownish behavior of one of the lead developers on social media. I, I don't understand why some people in leadership positions in these studios almost go out of their way to hurt the perception of their game. But if you have Game Pass, give the game a go at some point. There's a decent game here mechanically, at least I think so. But let's get back to the game's performance on PC. Like most games these days, especially Unreal Engine 5, we do have upscaling options. We can use Unreal Engine 5's TSR, we have FSR 3, and DLSS as well. We're playing the game at 3440 by 1440 on an RTX 4090 Ryzen 9800X3D. We'll start with upscaling disabled, but you do have the UE5 TSR with a resolution slider, which is really nice. We have AMD's FSR 3 with no frame generation, unfortunately. And we also have DLSS with DLSS frame generation, which actually works really, really well in this game, even with a mouse and keyboard. We'll start with native resolution, no upscaling. Anti-aliasing is set to epic, but we're not using any upscaling here. And I've also set the FPS on the top of the screen so you guys can see what we're getting. Let's say we're getting around 65 FPS. And the image looks really good, although some of the distant objects do look a little bit grainy. And there's a little bit of flicker as well, especially with the clouds, they do look a little bit grainy. And then if we move the camera a little bit, things do become a little bit more unstable. But I would say overall, it looks pretty good. Another option we have is we can use TSR at 100% resolution scale. And it actually looks quite a bit better. The image is definitely more stable. However, it is costing us a little bit of performance. Previously, we are getting around 65 FPS. And now we've dropped to, let's say, 60 FPS. But it does look more stable. Unfortunately, there is no FSR or DLSS native resolution. So FSR AA or DLAA. So TSR is really the only way. And if you move the camera left and right, yeah, it does become a little bit more unstable uh, unfortunately, but yeah, that's Unreal Engine 5 for you. There's a lot going on, especially with the uh, software or hardware RT. Uh, it can be a bit noisy sometimes, but yeah, the clouds still look a little bit grainy. Now, if we look at FSR quality next, it does actually a pretty good job. And we still have a little bit of flicker, but it's not too bad. And if we look at our performance, we went all the way up to 85 FPS, guys. So Unreal Engine 5 was designed with upscaling in mind. I know there's some people stuck in the past that it's native resolution or nothing. And hey, that's fine if that's what you want. But it's going to cost you with Unreal Engine 5. As you can see, using FSR or DLSS quality gets a lot of FPS. Now, where FSR falls apart, though is in motion so as you can see if we move the camera left and right things do become noticeably more unstable 
And it's not just the plants or the finer detail, but even if you look at the dock, for example, uh, the grains and uh, the wood, it, it does become a bit more unstable, unfortunately, although we are getting a nice bump to our performance. And next, we can take a look at DLSS quality. We're getting very similar performance to FSR quality, which is how it usually is. And it looks pretty good. I would say that maybe FSR looked a little bit sharper, but yeah, I mean, sitting still, uh, FSR actually looked pretty good. Now, where DLSS has a pretty big advantage is in motion, where FSR fell apart. With DLSS, if we move the camera, it's definitely a lot more stable. Although there is still a bit of flicker, of course, with Unreal Engine 5, especially if it uses Lumen. Even hardware lumen can look a bit unstable in this game as well because they're using their own denoising methods for ray tracing. So ray tracing can introduce that. Hopefully we see ray reconstruction in the future be added to these Unreal Engine 5 games and AMD's alternative to ray reconstruction, which is something that they're actually working on. So yeah, I'm excited to look at those in the future, hopefully. But I wanted to focus on actual performance while playing the game and I made this run in this city, Paradise. We're back to no upscaling, so this is native 3440 by 1440 with hardware ray tracing enabled, all settings maxed out, and uh, as you can see, the game actually does pretty well. We're above 60 FPS, say around 60 FPS, and yeah, we're using RTX 4090, but it gives you an overall idea because, you know, this game does use some of the latest feature. It uses Nanite, which looks really good in this game, and what's most concerned about Unreal Engine 5 games is, of course, stuttering. And this game is actually pretty good with that. Now, there is some little hitches, like when we go through this gate for the first time, you see just a little hitch that happens. So there is some shader compilation stutter that happens here or there, but it's not really all that frequent. I mean, I've been playing the game. It wasn't intrusive at all, but it can happen uh, here and there. I'd say overall, though, I would put this game on the top tier of Unreal Engine 5 games as far as performance goes, because we've seen some pretty bad ones like, I don't know, Silent Hill 2 comes to mind. This one is much better than Silent Hill 2. You're not going to get crippling stutters or anything like that, but every once in a while you might get a shader compilation stutter or a traversal stutter, but as you can see here, it's been running fairly smooth. But what if we were to turn DLSS quality? Well, with DLSS quality, the performance gains are massive, guys. We're seeing a 50% increase in performance. And as I showed you earlier, DLSS does improve on the image quality. It makes it more stable, especially when moving the camera, which you're gonna constantly do in this game because you're running around and fighting enemies and we get better 1% lows. So again, it's a no brainer. The game and the engine especially has been designed with upscaling in mind. Now, whether we like it or not, that is the actual reality. So I can respect people who's either native resolution or nothing. Personally, I don't get it because to me, it's an option. If I turn it on, does it make my gameplay experience better or worse? And I would say that DLSS most definitely <laughs> makes it much better because I'm nearly getting 50% more performance with it on and it makes the image look more stable. So yeah, I would say that is a win. But we also have DLSS Frame generation, like I mentioned previously, it actually works really well in this game. So let's go ahead and throw that on as well. And we get a massive boost to FPS again. So we already were getting around 90 FPS and with DLSS frame generation on top of DLSS quality, we're at around 145 FPS, which is awesome, guys. It looks absolutely fantastic. Again, I've been playing the game with DLSS frame generation and DLSS quality to kind of get a feel for it. And I've been playing with a mouse and keyboard, running around, twitching around, and I didn't see any artifacting or anything that stands out. It just looks like 140 FPS and it feels great because our base FPS is really good to begin with. We're already at around 80 to 90 FPS without frame generation anyway. So yeah, it works extremely well. I hope they can add FSR frame generation. I'm not sure why they hadn't, but I hope that they can because FSR frame generation does a really good job as well. So yeah, overall, if you have an RTX 4000, 5000 GPU, you can max everything out no problem and have a very good and fluid gameplay experience. Now, I did get a question 
on my Twitter post, I made a Twitter post about software and hardware lumen. People are asking, what is the cost to performance between software and hardware lumen? And there is a cost. So I made the same run with software lumen. So what you guys are looking at here is we have DLSS quality enabled, but on the left side, we're using software lumen and on the right side, we're using hardware lumen. And in this particular run, I actually didn't see a massive cost to performance. I saw about a 10% cost to going from software lumen to hardware lumen. So yeah, not a big issue, but of course that's going to depend on the type of GPU you have, the resolution that you're playing at, but on an RTX 4090, the cost is not that big. But again, it can also depend sometimes on the area. There can be really big and noticeable differences between software and hardware lumen, always with reflections, of course, but also global illumination. Normally in dimly lit areas, the indirect lighting especially is a lot better with hardware lumen. But again, software lumen looks really good as well. So yeah, guys, pretty interesting game. But we've arrived at the end of the video, guys. I wanted to show you it because Unreal Engine 5 games have been hit or miss, right? Some have uh, pretty big performance issues like Silent Hill 2. And this is one of the better ones. And it also has hardware ray tracing as well, which is a feature that I like to see more and more of, especially in Unreal Engine 5 games. Because I can understand for consoles, you want to focus on software. But on PC, a lot of us have capable hardware that can handle it and it does a better job visually. And I like my beautiful visuals on PC. So I think it was worthy of a highlight and making a video about it, even though I don't think it's gonna be all that popular, but the game itself, it's a pretty good game so far. It's been pretty fun. It's not like a Dragon Age Veilguard, not at all, not even close. Unfortunately, the developer of the game had to open their stupid mouth and make a big fuss about things and unfortunately it hurt the perception of their game. So whether it's fair or unfair, the game is going to be slammed in the comments section, probably even my own. But hey, that's the internet for you. But hey, if you have Game Pass, I would suggest giving it a try. Why wouldn't you? And uh, yeah, I hope to see more Unreal Engine 5 games like this that incorporate hardware and software ray tracing. I hope to see FSR 3 be added into the game because it should have been at launch. And yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Leave your comments down below. Share your thoughts. Maybe I missed on something. Share your experience and let me know. But that's going to be it. I'll see you on the next one. Have a great weekend and bye-bye. You're going to shoot that.